Okay, so here we have the Fumaco KC601 Pro video switcher, mixer, and live streamer all in one. Amazing little product, and we're just going to go through all the different features starting right from uh, the ports here. Uh, this one is a one, two, three, four HDMI uh, inputs. Uh, it also comes with audio inputs XLR1, 2, mic, or line in. Uh, one and two and then output for your headphones um, it also comes with uh, the live streaming USB port which is the top one the one in blue and one on the bottom for high bitrate video recording we will be testing all of this out the biggest feature the biggest biggest reason why I went ahead with this one as opposed to the others was that this one has two HDMI ports one uh, for program out and one for uh, the multi view out so uh, in all the others that I looked at I'm not going to take any names but you could only program them uh, you could only set them to have either program or the multi view output and in my opinion that was uh, just a big drawback that I could not live with um, it also has a barrel connector with a nice little uh, nut on top that will uh, secure it properly just so that it don't doesn't come loose uh, Also comes with this is a USB-C you can power it through here as well. I have tried that and it works uh, This port is also required if you're doing any firmware updates on the Fomaco this along with this everything comes in the box. Let's go ahead and hook this uh, device up and see how that looks Okay, so I have uh, just uh, plugged in all the connections that I will be using. The power is here. I'm using, uh, I didn't hook up all four. I hooked up HDMI 1, 2, and sorry, 1, 3, and 4. Uh, so one main camera, which is covering this, uh, this angle here, the one that you're seeing, and then uh, one angle from the webcam, and then a third angle. Um, just from my PC output so just powering it on for you right now and uh, goes through all the little different screens here before it uh, shows up okay and then there we're seeing all the inputs um, I did also plug in the um, USB port with an SD card reader and an SD card so that's where I'll be recording this so very straightforward you have a volume button uh, focus zoom uh, over here and uh, that is something that well, let me just start the recording here okay so that's recording um, so that's what you would use in case you were using a PTZ camera uh, then this is the volume uh, button basically you will decide this will decide whether your uh, audio that you're doing is coming from is a coming from a mix or if it's coming from uh, the source that you're connected to which is a F uh, V which stands for uh, audio follows the video um, then you have the PTZ control button the load and the load and save button layers a and B and you have uh, the very nice T bar over here uh, then you have the auto transition button which is in case there was a, a second source selected over there which let's just say I can make this and if I press the auto this will fade uh, to whichever transition I have selected same thing that I can do with the t-bar very simple and straightforward all of these buttons here in the bottom let's just switch that so all these buttons here in the middle row are for a uh, program source select which means if I if I press any of these buttons directly, as you can see right up on top in, in this window over here, uh, they will cut to that source directly. So that is your program source select. The buttons, buttons at the bottom, all of these are your preview source select or known as PST. Um, and then you have the menu button right here. So um, basically just to in case you want to properly cross fade or uh, apply any of the other available transitions to uh, the video that's coming up you would first load that video so right now here we have me uh, loaded in the preview uh, if i hit the auto button then that's uh, what starts to show up on the screen 
and um, if you, let's say if I change this to my uh, other source which is coming from the desktop computer just the the lock screen um, so I can load these to the preview and then transition to them so every time you want to use any of the transitions you have to go through that way otherwise if you just want to cut directly to the scene you can just use these buttons right over here as well which are the program select a uh, very important differentiation that then you also have the crop and tilt so all of these are this one is also a push button all three of them are uh, push buttons as well okay so let's take a look at the audio first of all so I'm uh, basically running through this mixer as if uh, you've just taken it out of the box and you're ready to start streaming so the most important thing for me uh, next would be the audio because I want to always make sure that I'm getting the right audio into uh, my uh, output here whether I'm recording it or whether I'm streaming it and the way I would do that is switch the source again so the way we would do that is uh, if you you have to press and hold this button in order for it to change modes so exactly what that does here is it says if you long press and hold the AVF or mix button to activate the AFV mode and light it up red. So this is basically taking up whatever source is selected right now. Whatever source is selected, it's gonna it's gonna pick that up. So if I have right now this is on I have number three. Um, number three, uh, my HDMI three, and that's why it's taking the audio of HDMI three. If I switch this to two. And you see how it jumped over to number uh, channel two because it's now taking the audio from my HDMI two, which is um, my which is my webcam right now, the one that I'm, I'm talking to you through. So that's what um, AFV does. Uh, I uh, would not usually be using this mode whenever I'm recording. It would uh, I would try that all my audio is going through one dedicated source, and that uh, I treat as my master. So in order to uh, set it to the other mode, um, we would basically press and hold down the, the, the sound button again. And once it switches to white, so now I can select which of the sources um, I want the audio to be coming from. So in this case, even though, so it's set to three right now, because the HDMI three is uh, the camera showing the mixer, I can actually turn this off and have the audio coming in from the webcam which is you can see the levels start to jump up and down that's another way you can quickly tell if you're getting audio or not from um, the sound that the sound source that you've selected very good okay so while we're on the topic of audio so the next thing that I want to quickly mention here is how you can adjust individual um, volume for the channels that are uh, you're using versus the the master out that you'll be giving out so um, if you want to just adjust the volume of the source that's coming in for example in this case it's channel 2 you would hold down the control button channel 2 and then you rotate the knob and I don't know how well you can see here but it's very tiny on the screen it says channel 2 volume and it's going up and down right in the middle of the screen here Otherwise, if you're not pressing and holding any of the buttons down, uh, and if you just rotate this button right here, this would only affect the master volume out that's the, that you're sending out from uh, the mixer. Okay, so one of the biggest, uh, other biggest features of this unit is that it has uh, about 30 different special effects right in the um, menus built in. So that's pretty neat here. If I switch to, when we go from okay so when we go from one um, when we go from one scene to the next then the T bar is basically uh, deciding the transition now you can change the transition uh, and there's a very simple way to do this uh, just need to hold down let me just switch this back so you need to hold on the menu button and the number four here and then that allows you to uh, roam around and select which transition you want to set so uh, let's say if I want to select this guy right here and then whoosh, there we go simple as that 
and then you can switch around um, amongst any other so let's go with this one you can just keep turning the knob here as I'm doing and just keep switching between the two again as I had mentioned earlier you can still use the auto button and that will rely on whatever um, transition you have programmed in uh, in the menu here and it switches right to that looks pretty neat and there it has about 30 effects to choose from let's see what else we have here okay so this one looks yeah so you could do which many others uh, have also shown you can do like a split screen in case uh, this was pointing towards in case you were pointing this towards two hosts you could uh, do like a split screen by just leaving the t-bar somewhere in the middle um, very neat very neat indeed Okay, so the next thing we're going to take a look at will be the uh, detailed menu system. Hopefully you can uh, see this correctly in the screen. And uh, so the first thing, the first thing here it says is, um, talks about the HDMI. Uh, and we have the options here to, uh, let's see, HDMI 1, it's showing you is connected, HDMI 2 is connected, HDMI 3 is connected at 59.9, uh, HDMI 4 has uh, nothing, all in is HDMI, output settings, um, okay, so what do you want to do with your HDMI out? Um, selection should it be set to program or um, preview select uh, I like to keep that at, again it depends you can have that set to uh, preview if you're going to be sending out your, your your program through USB which is what I have set otherwise you can do vice versa it, it really depends on how you uh, what your setup is and what you're using this for to go back one step in the menu you would just hit the, the menu key so the next thing that we're going to take a look at in the menu is the layer system and uh, this is basically uh, another way of saying picture in picture mode so now um, let's say for example so right now you can only see the mixer uh, that's showing up so what i can do is if i uh, bring the mixer up by pressing three there and then i can add myself when i press a and then obviously you can, I mean, I can move this around all the way to the right. And let's say, will this go down? Yep, okay, perfect. So I can move this there and, okay. So now you can see me basically as an inset. So that's the picture in picture mode, also known as what, what we're using here as layers. So there's two layers. One is uh, layer A and layer B. Uh, in our case here, the layer B is the one that's in the background and the layer A is the one in front. You can very easily switch um, back and forth if you want to switch. So for example, what I'm going to do now is uh, I can remove myself from here and change that to uh, my HDMI 1 source, which is the computer. And in order to do that, if I go back there and then I press the number 1 here, you see that that jumped over onto there and there we go so now in the so now we're just seeing that fancy and if i press the one two three four the the program buttons here we can sw still switch between um the backgrounds and the layer that's on the front the, the layer a um is the one that's still sitting in front so let me just switch back and there we go we can just turn off the layer one like that that was the easiest way to take a look at the layers and then now the next thing in the menus is we have the picture setting so um, picture setting you can import up to 16 pictures bk1 assigns the picture of bk1 from the picture tool and bk2 you can assign the uh, picture to bk2 so so the, when I'm cycling between all these different modes here, you can see how it's changing on the right hand side. These are all the different, um, looks like we have about 11 in there right now. Same thing, if you want to change it for BK1, you can do that here. Um, and as I just mentioned, you can also add, you can also add your own um, pictures here to load and, and show or keep, in, keep them in the background. 
So I guess what they're trying to say here is that, so these can be used as your backgrounds for your chroma key. Um, again, I do not have, uh, unfortunately, I do not have a green screen to test this with, but in case you do have a green screen, um, you can, this is where you would set your backgrounds um, if you're sitting in front of a green screen right now, and this is what would appear, the BK1 or the BK2 is what would appear. Okay, the next thing is the logo setting. So I don't have a logo on here right now. Uh, Logo1.jpg, it's picking that up from its inbuilt memory. Uh, I will try to load, load in my logo to see how that looks. So audio, we had already uh, taken a look at audio channel, channel. So here, basically, it's this is another way of going into the menu if you want to be 100% sure and make sure that uh, you've selected the right channel. Like if I, I can still just turn this off by hitting the number two or you can just turn it off from here and turn on a different source. Very simple. So this already been covered actually. Volume, input volume. So the same thing, the shortcut I had showed you earlier was if you want to hold down control and then press the channel that you want to up lower or increase the volume for. If you don't want to do that, there's always a way you can go into the menu and do that uh, manually. Output volume and monitoring are separate. So here is another very important uh, feature um, that not many of these tools have, uh, and that is the input delay. So it's nobody's fault, but every now and then, if you do decide to put your uh, audio directly into the mixer via uh, line in one or, or mic in, uh, and if you notice that the video is not in sync with the audio, you can uh, come into the menu here and then set the audio uh, delay for aux one or two a very useful feature to have right there mic setting okay so this okay so this uh, will let you decide um, what kind of audio levels you're putting in to uh, all of the ports so you can decide that here uh, this is for the 3.5 mm jack uh, one set to mic in other one is set to line in um, the XLR combo is set to balanced mono, both of them actually, and then XLR mode is mono copy, noise gate is off. What's the other option here? To turn it on. Okay, next thing is audio monitor should be the master or should it be from any of your connected sources? I am gonna leave that on master. Equalizer, uh, just like the name suggests, we're not gonna get, get into it. Okay, so there is a lot to be covered in the advanced section of um, this menu, but as I mentioned, the, the, the perspective that I wanna give about this uh, mixer is that you've just caught this, you've bought it, or you're thinking about buying it, and the top five things that you need to know in order to be up and running and uh, get going with it. So for the most part, uh, the basics have been covered, and you know how to uh, connect your cameras, you know how to start recording or stop recording, um, you know how to toggle your audio sources. Um, now we're gonna take a look at some of the, um, the, the bigger features of this little box, which is uh, you know the recording and the, the streaming, the biggest feature. So when I bought this unit, um, this was not advertised, but it, it, was, um, it came out in a later firmware update that you could stream directly from uh, this little unit, which is what makes it amazing. So the next thing, that's what we're gonna take a look at, how to access the console uh, settings and also to uh, enable or uh, do a firmware update to unlock these uh, different options for you. So if I go under menu here and you go under advanced, we're gonna skip uh, the PTZ chroma transition scenes part. So uh, under record, set the data rate to high, which is already um, set by default. Enable means uh, en enable means that it is recording right now, and I don't know if you can see this tiny little, tiny little record uh, button over there, and you can toggle that on and off by pressing and holding down the menu key and pressing the record at the same time. That'll turn the recording on or off. Um, and then this is where it's showing me the storage. I right now I have a 64 gig. Uh, memory card and a card reader connected to this unit. So that's what we're recording this on live. And um, I still have a, a lot of space to go. 
it says recording duration it's been recording for about 38 minutes now uh, obviously the final video that you're seeing will be edited and will be a smaller duration and this is the biggest biggest deal right here the stream option if you go into the stream option so the first thing we see here is the stream server set the data rate start streaming so i so right now even if i try to do this this is not going to work because uh, it's not connected to the internet uh, you do need to have uh, a, a network cable connected to this device you need to have a valid ip address uh, and a few other things which we'll show you shortly connect status it says no connect otherwise it would have said i, I believe it says internet when it's, it is connected stream duration says zero stream bitrate says zero and then if I go back out, the last thing here says uh, system network setting. So console IP, stream IP, PTZ IP list. This is where you will see all your different um, IP addresses. Uh, this is kind of important and I'll show you that in a second uh, because uh, you need to know exactly what IP address you're going to use to access uh, the web server from a computer in order to configure your servers. Um, Time settings, operating settings, date info, factory reset. So that's just all self-explanatory. We're not getting, going to get into this. The next thing we're going to check out is the live stream part. OK, so um, I have just connected my internet cable to this uh, Fomaco box here. So now let's go back into the menu. Let's see how long it takes for it to start to recognize it. I'm going to go under advanced and stream and right now it says connection connection status no connect okay so finally now so you see once we started getting the IP address over there it says in the uh, stream section we see the connection status does say internet now under the stream server okay so I have I already have a couple configured but um, I'll show you how to do this okay so here I am recording my screen uh, and in order for us to access the live stream function I need to put in uh, let's see here I need to put in actually my so I don't I will not be if I put in the console IP which is this guy 192.168.5.172 I will not get anything so what needs to happen is I actually need the IP address the stream IP address which is for there we go so like it didn't auto populate I just I don't know why I just had to press the button here in order for it to change so now now that I have this so if I go back this is what you need you need to use the stream IP address and that's what you will put into your web browser and lo and behold it uh, opens up uh, the username and password are already pre-populated pre you hit login you will uh, reach the screen so this is so let me just delete basically this is where you can go in and put in your um, you can select your bitrate for what you'll be streaming at where you can also click on create streaming address you can give it any name so let's say if you stream to youtube you can just put in the name youtube um, i'm just going to put in a gs dash just so that that will help me uh, differentiate and find out which one of my channels this is going to and uh, then you can get the RTMP address by going to your okay so the way you would do this is uh, so this is the the key uh, and then this is your stream URL so you would copy the stream URL here and then you would take the key and you would paste it here yeah you see starts to show so I'm not gonna do that but yeah so once you do and you hit confirm 
um, it, it basically starts to show up right here. So now um, th this is actually a good test. So everything is in there already. So if I now on my switcher here, if I say that I'm gonna, the shortcut to this is the menu key and the on air. Uh, so if I go, let's get, get out of the menu here, hold down this and that, and then it says start streaming. So you should see now, so on, on the computer, in a moment or so, it should start showing my picture. So that now you're seeing directly coming from the switcher. And if I switch to um, my webcam uh, on the switcher, uh, obviously it's gonna be like a 15 second delay, but then you will see it switch over to uh, the webcam as well. So that is uh, how you can stream directly from your Fomaco switcher. It's a very fancy feature to have and then to turn the stream off if I want to I would just to go back here and switch to yeah so I would just hold down the menu and the on air button again and then that should stop the stream. Uh, it'll take up yep, and immediately on the screen you can see that it changed to no data. That is how you stream to YouTube from this wonderful little device. So another thing I want to mention here is that even if so, if if you don't, if you have a computer connected to your console, uh, you can actually go on air right from here. So you can, if you press the the on air button over here, and then you can see on the right hand side the bit rate starts and the durations just started. So this is another way you can um, go on air. You can have, uh, I think, I believe up to three. Um, and you can stream to all three at the same time directly from um, your your console. You don't have to do that. You can use a service like Restream or something. You can only have it going to one server and then redistribute it from there. Um, or but, but if you want to be in more control, if you want to send it to two destinations uh, just as a backup, uh, then you can definitely do that directly through the box itself. So. It's an amazing feature. If you look at the price point for how much this thing costs, it really comes with a lot of fancy, neat features for you to uh, cover. Okay, so the the last thing we're going to take a look at is how to do a firmware update on your computers uh, on your on your Fomaco device. You need to be on the correct firmware version. So right now I am on. The MCU version 4.05, the FPGA version 5.0.7, and the SOC version 1.0, sorry, 1.42. Um, that's the that's the the software version I am on um, that you need to be on in order to be able to have access to that live stream function. So uh, now I'm going to unplug because you have to basically follow the instructions. You have to unplug everything. Uh, in order for you to uh, be able to um, do the firmware update on this thing. Okay, so I have uh, I have the firmware files uh, right here downloaded already, and I got these from um, a link from the Fomaco support, and I'll uh, try to um, include this in the description of the video, but the links can change, so I'm uh, not sure how long that's going to work. Uh, so let's just go ahead and extract the contents and see what the instructions have to say. Uh, okay, so the first thing is this PDF here uh, that if we open up, it should tell us what to do. First of all, the first step is to download the upgrade tool and firmware. So it says um, there's three cables in there, which for sure we did have. Um, these are the tools these are the cables now let's take a look at the connection diagram uh, connect the power cord connect the type c uh, as shown and then turn on the kc601 pro so that's what we're gonna do here i already have the power hooked up i am connecting the usb c connection and i am plugging it in now to my desktop computer that is recording everything and next step is to turn the 
unit on so that is happening right now let's see if we if the computer notices anything uh, turn on the unit and then open the file you downloaded so then we have to go into the upgrade tool so it's, uh, according to the instructions let go let's go into the upgrade tool and then look for the upgrade tool smart screen I'm just gonna say run anyway okay and then it says yep that looks uh, pretty much as it should and then I'm going to hit login and I get file error okay that's fine it uh, it opened up the uh, the tool anyway and so as shown below connect status is green indicating that the computer and switcher are connected open the file and then we're going to browse to the file so looks like it was trying to search the desktop when it shouldn't have been so now that file is located that is the um, bin file the mcuv 4.05 I'm gonna hit open and then as you can see it uh, device connected successfully um, following the correct instructions tick all the boxes and then hit upgrade so this is where we are at so I'm gonna check all the boxes by doing that and then I am going to hit upgrade well you can also just hit the, the read version uh, and that'll show you the old versions. I've already done the firmware update, or maybe I haven't. Looks like it's uh, new versions 5.09 on the bin file. And then I'm gonna hit upgrade, confirm upgrade. And now we have to wait. So this is tricky, and I might pause this because this takes a bit of time this can take a few minutes and I can hear my fan here actually going faster than it usually is it's gonna take some time for this to finish so so let's, let's wait it I might speed this part up okay so just to show you this is um, what's showing up on the switcher when uh, it is going through the firmware update so now it looks like it's re booting in the middle but on the in the screen on my computer I can see that the font file is still um, working Okay, so as soon as that finished, as soon as that went to 100%, uh, the display came back on. Now, according to the documentation, as soon as this finishes, uh, this is where we are. Once the upgrade is complete, unplug and restart the switcher. So, unplugging the USB right now. There we go, and turning the switcher off. Okay, now we have to change the cables. So I'm gonna take this USB to the top one. Okay, now plug this in, turn off the switcher, connect the switcher, turn the switcher off. The instructions are worded in a way that uh, Connect the switcher to the USB cable and, and turn switcher off. Then go to the images and then go to the USB download. Important, now turn on. Turn this on and within five seconds, press the update firmware button, which I think I did as soon as I heard the ding and now it should be going through all of these screens here so this all looks normal 
and where it should end up at and this is fine the last time also it had started saying not responding so that's uh, I'm kind of expecting that so I hear it connecting and disconnecting connecting and disconnecting okay now and as you see exactly like how they have in the screenshot on the left side um, it has um, finished with the exact same uh, prompts so this tells me that my firmware update was successful and this is basically what uh, needs to be done in order to get you um, the stream setting uh, in the system so congratulations this is how um, you would update uh, the firmware and now you are good to go hey i hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as uh, as much um, as i had and i enjoyed making this video for you and hopefully this video will make you uh, more aware uh, it will help you make a good decision on whether this is the right product for you and um, i know that uh, for me it's definitely the right it's exactly what i needed for my purposes i live stream i switch between cameras i, I do um events weddings things like that so this is everything that i need is definitely in there uh, your mileage may vary again thank you for watching and i hope this helps you out a lot